Hi everyone! This video will be on theme with my recent thermoacoustic projects, though not an advancement of the engines or refrigeration systems we've been working on. Instead, I thought it would be fun to take a closer look at a singing tube, which we've seen before in this little demonstration, which I have since broken in the setup for this video. So here's an earlier clip to show you how this worked. Bruce Yeeney, if you're familiar with his YouTube channel, he's got a great science YouTube channel and recently did a video entirely dedicated to these singing tubes and how they function. His explanation is really good, so I'll link his video in the description below. And I think that some of the experiments that we'll do today will help to validate the process uh, that he describes causes the resonance in these systems. Now I found this enormous quartz glass tube and couldn't resist recreating the singing tube experiment on a large scale. I think the increased size coupled with the use of an open flame to kickstart the resonance will give us some really interesting things to see. We might learn something, or maybe not, but either way I think it'll be a good time. I'll not use a script for this video, so we'll just see what happens as we continue along. So what I have here is my quartz tube mounted to the end of a tripod, which is held very precariously in a vise on my table at the base here. What I'll start with is I'll take my burner and place it inside of this tube. And I already know that this will be at the correct height to start producing some resonance because in the setup for this video, I had to decide how high to mount my quartz tube, and then also how high to extend the length of my burner. So this should work for us. So let's give this a shot. I'll bring a flame up here and then turn on the gas. Okay, so right now we have more flame entering into this tube than is ideal. And by doing that, we're just creating a constant flow, a constant chimney effect. But watch what happens when I let the flow of gas die down a little bit. And I'm just providing, just providing enough gas to sustain the flame at that point. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? Oh man. <laughs> Let's do that again. That's a harmonic. That was a harmonic note right there. So what we were doing in that case was uh, generating not just the fundamental frequency of this tube, but we were actually generating uh, a wavelength that had multiple nodes inside the tube to reach that higher note. Uh, okay, let's uh, pause for a second here because at, at this state, um, what we are seeing in the tube is, is really hard to distinguish because the propane flame uh, is a very light color. That, that light blue color makes it really hard to see what's going on, especially if I want to switch to uh, slow motion footage. The flame is just too dim. So one thing that we can do to make this flame uh, appear much clearer to the camera and to my eyes is to contaminate it with sodium ions. Sodium uh, emits a very unique spectrum of light, which is a very bright yellow and that will increase the brightness of this propane flame, which you can see is, is quite dim, except where there's, there's not enough oxygen for it to burn. Then it starts producing soot and you do get a little bit of yellow color. But I think we'll see this flame increase quite a bit in brightness if we add a little bit of sodium contamination. So I've got a little piece of cotton string here and I want to wet this with a little bit of salt water. Now, the cotton string actually resists absorbing water directly. Uh, it, it actually takes quite a bit of effort to get the water to soak into this string. One way that you can stop that from happening and you can actually make the string absorb water much more easily is by wetting it a little bit with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is actually a much wetter liquid than water. It's much better at wetting things and absorbing into them. And so if you actually get the cotton wet with a little bit of alcohol beforehand, you can then much more easily absorb salt water into it. 
This is actually a trick that I used to use when I was uh, making a lot of fireworks. You often mix a little bit of rubbing alcohol into your water to wet charcoal or black powder, and that makes the, uh, makes the powder become wet much more easily. So little fact there that might be of use for different experiments. So I'll just place that, that wick on top of the burner, which now has a little bit of salt water solution soaked into it. And let's see what the flame looks like now. Look at that. Okay, much, much brighter. That being as bright as it is should be much easier to see on camera. So let's place this back inside the tube and try getting some slow motion shots. You can very much feel the air pressure coming out of the bottom of this tube when it's in resonance. And I think that is exactly what is causing the flame to actually shrink down in size, as you can see in some of the high speed footage that I've captured. The flame actually gets compressed downward. I think the flow of gas through the burner is actually being forced back down by the sound wave expanding. And so the flame drops in size. It's really cool how much force comes out of the bottom of this tube, which I can feel with my hand. What's also really interesting, I think, is the in-between stage where the flame goes from that non-resonant state to suddenly getting a little bit of wiggle in it before it completely collapses. The sound wave actually becomes so strong that it starts pushing that flame downward. That in-between stage, I think, is the coolest part because then you actually see the sound wave in action. Now, something else that we can try is actually moving the source of heat from this burner further into the tube. Because if you remember from my first thermoacoustic video and uh, this smaller demonstration, the position in the tube that actually created the best resonance was a quarter of the way into that tube. Right now, this burner is only about an eighth of the way into this larger quartz tube. So Although we are generating resonance, and we even saw we generated a harmonic frequency, we can probably do better. To do that, I'll ignite this burner and then lift it by hand. Okay, once again, I'm pushing too much gas through the tube, too much flame, and that's causing resonance to not be able to occur because the heat is being distributed too evenly inside the tube. There's no difference in temperature anywhere which could cause you know, an uneven expansion contraction cycle. So let me push this further in and then reduce the gas flow. Okay, one quarter of the tube length. <laughs> Another harmonic. And the, uh, the pressure from the sound wave blew the flame out. You would think the flow of propane would be enough to continuously be pushing the flame up along with the convective forces that are also drawing the flame up, neither of those things can resist the strength of the sound wave as it bounces down this tube, as it just pushes that flame downward. And of course, eventually, the sound wave becomes so strong that it can extinguish the burner. So it's actually really important that I scaled this up in order to capture the slow motion footage in the way that we have for this video. By increasing the length of this pipe, we've lowered the fundamental frequency of the sound wave of this tube. It takes a lot longer for sound to travel up this pipe and then back down than it would for this little tube. Even though we probably could get a resonant wave going in this with a little propane burner, we wouldn't be able to see nearly the detail in slow motion that we're able to see in this tube. Because by increasing the size, we've effectively 
well, slowed down everything that happens visually. The wave takes longer to travel up and longer to travel back down. And so if we're capturing it at like a thousand frames per second, that thousand frames will be able to see a wave traveling down over a much longer period of time in slow motion than the amount of time it would travel, you know, this far in a little tube like this. Well, I hope this demonstration has given you some ideas. Maybe you've been taught something just by the pure visuals of it. I know when I you know, go off script like this that I am not nearly as concise and the logic of my explanations doesn't flow nearly as well. But for a video like my last one, where I went so in depth with thermoacoustics, that actually takes about a week of work to write a script like that. And that's not even including all the research that I've done beforehand to make sure I'm correct with all the information I'm presenting. I'll be halfway through the script. Wait a minute, do I really know if that's accurate or not? And then I have to go through an hour or two of Googling and looking through research papers. So it, it just takes a lot of work to go through those scripted videos. I hope you appreciate both these casual videos along with those more in-depth ones. Thank you for leaving me comments below. I still read all of them and I try to reply to as many as I can. If you've asked a really good question and I don't leave you an answer, it's probably because it's been answered before in the comments. So if you don't get an answer from me within 24 hours and you think your question was a good one, scroll down a little bit. I've probably answered it a number of times before. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sticking with me through the different projects that I do here in all the different styles that I explore. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.